fight. I had a bit of a catch up video. I've got nothing on the wrist tonight to show you because it's all down there on the deck. And I've got not one, not two, three or four or five things to show you tonight. And I'll go down and I'll take a look at each one. See you in a bit. <laughs> So, the first one up on the list tonight Seconda BKT Stainless Steel and Ceramic Bracelet Chronograph Now I paid a couple of quid for this and the only thing really wrong with this is it's got a slight ding up there on the crystal and it's missing its second hand which was a bit weird but it is like you know I quite like it, it's, a, it's kind of a panda like the two white eyes against the black background uh, it's a slow chrono second Got a bit of a click to the button, and you can see the bottom sub dial. And there you go. Now, this is going to be my beta watch. This is the one I'm going to wear. When I'm, you know, work, uh, working on stuff, I quite like that. So there you go. For the price I paid for it, like you know, the the bracelet, the case, um, the movement is worth ten times that. So it's got a good working movement. It's just missing like the um, second hand. I also think the loom's missing out of the hour hand as well. Uh, as you can see, the hour hand's just on the eight. And it's a bit hard to see, and it does look like there's missing something. So, but that's not a problem. It can easily be fixed. Got a tacky meter on it. I, you know, what's not to like? I mean, it's a good beat to watch. Right, there you go. On to the next. What we have coming up here this is a Soviet. Hold your export. Day date keeps astonishingly good time. Didn't come over magnetized, which I was very pleased about. I think that looks amazing. And I'll put it on this like a um, 1970s rally strap for the lack of having not much straps back, uh, unfortunately. But it's comfortable. It doesn't look too diminutive but against the, the size of the watch. I think that's a keeper on there. Very nice in that bracelet. So there you go. Pole Jot Exports Big Square Soviet Beastie. So we'll take on to the next one. Now then. We all know that I like dancing hand watches. Here's the Pulsar V601. As you can see, it's still working. Right, that's working properly now. It's looking very good. I've had this one up on the bench all this last few days, and I've cleaned all the insides and everything, you know, but the pushes are still very stiff, and it's just not you know it really does need some work doing to it and the coil 
for the subdial isn't working and that's why the whole watch isn't working properly this is the pulsar v600 right the v600 if you look at the bezel the bezel's the switch whereas like, it hasn't got a stem at all that's what i like them they're, they're so different so enter in the third dancing hands watch that's working ish Pulsar V691 in what they call the civilian military dial. The reason it's not on a bracelet, because I have got the bracelet for it, it's got a very nice fitted bracelet, is I don't have any spare 20mm um, spring bars. I've run out. Uh, now this one is problematic. Firstly, the switch that's attached to the stem is very, very. You now, if you watch, like it won't go back to it after I've done it. Like if I do that, right, as you can see, the minute hand is going around and it stops at twelve. That's good. So right, then you set the. This is this is the chronograph function. In operation, both the hands are supposed to go to twelve. Right, and then you just reset it and it, it'll find the closest way if it's anywhere up to six o'clock it'll go backwards on the right hand side if it's closer on the left hand side from six to twelve then it'll go back up on the left hand side so now we'll put this back and put it back onto time now it's supposed to go back oh it has gone back on time oh well in that case then that's something that's worked because I did I was getting very frustrated with it right. but if I put it onto match which is supposed to be the time setting thing it will actually lose where it's supposed to be and it just refuses you have to reset the time manually which is a bit of a pain in the bum but you know these are incredibly complex watches as you can see right, you know, it's, and it's unusual for Pulsar that both this and the V601 have um, what's it, spring case backs as opposed to like um, the V600 which has a screw down case back so once that's on like you know it, I mean I've got a very nice fitted like you know um, it's kind of an oyster sort of thing like you know so as you can see, now you'll notice as well on this, they don't have the second hand. Alright, now I'm not so sure if the, um, the little twirly bit there is supposed to go around, there's seconds. So I have no idea. Now all three of these, as I have found, finding spares for any of them is insanely difficult. There are none. All you can do is you can hope to pick up a broken one and just harvest spares from there. But even the broken ones are costing a lot of money. So, you know, tread, tread with um, wariness when you're dealing with these dancing hand watches because they are problematic. They are, um, you know, prone to failure. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I've got a coil to fix that, so that's not a problem. Now I know that's what that is. But, you know, they are very very quirky sort of you know they're almost like super supercar sort of thing you know where things can go wrong very very quickly so you know there you go there's the pulsar 691 which doesn't look to be telling the right time no it's not okay yeah, that's what I mean. You, you put it on something else and it, it would tell the wrong time. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yes, it is. It is telling the right time. 27. Yeah. It's because I can't see it. Because this... I thought that was a second hand. And I thought, well, where's the main hour hand? And it's not. It's, it's the minute hand. There is no second hand. There's no spigot for a second hand. So it's very hard to see the, second, uh, the minute hand. So, you know, these are supposed to be, these civilians are supposed to be, like, slightly different themes to, like, the, the Pulsar military, which they issued to the RAF. So there you go, there's three working dancing hand watches. And on to the last bit. 
Now, I am so, because of my age and everything, I am ashamed to say that I have had to invest in one of these. It's um, a three times magnifier there. It's got a, a, a not a very good, it's kind of dim sort of um, LED. There's a 10 times loop which you swirl around, put it where you want it. Which is, I think it's actually quite a good feature. And it's got like a, um, a swivel that you find on a welding helmet. So you can then clonk it down and it goes because of where the the gap and everything, I don't know if you can see that, I, um, it goes over my glasses, a treat, now, I will say that this is much much easier to use than either the magnifying lens that I do use or the USB scope, so if you've got bad eyesight because of you know, it happens to us blokes like you know when we get to a certain age I always start to go a bit funny like you know, don't be ashamed of it, it's part of being alive, you know, get yourself one of these these are brilliant right and you know you can change the angle of the what's it the uh, lamp so you can focus in with a bit more light you know if you look here you can change the swivel of the lamp so you know it, it gives you a bit more you know it's all like you know touchy feely you know you just like push it down to make it go forward push it back make it go back you know. I quite like it, so you know, and um, I'm not sure if you can actually get even more. So you know, it's, it's it's like you know, it's like I don't know if they're rivets or if they're screws. They look like screws, um, but you can even put even better magnification in. But this is fine. Like when the loop's down, I mean, you can see really, really well. As you can see, it's, it's got like a um, fabric covered at the front and the back. That's your adjustment at the back to make it tighter or looser on your head. Right, you know, and um, if you've got a fat head, right, you know, right, it's just like a soft plastic. It's not soft plastic, it's like smooth plastic there. But the, um, the front part, the headband, you can see it's padded slightly, but I may well put some extra padding, like cut up an old microfiber cloth and just like tape it on or something. Right, and these adjust how you know, so you because the first thing I've done it and it went smack like that right on my nose and it didn't half hurt. And there's quite a bit of weight on the end of that, so you know, do adjust it and you know, like. But it is brilliant to say, like, if I want to look and see where I found a patrol, I just flip it up, like, you know, and I'll just nod it forward and it, it lands, like, where I want it to land, and then I can carry on, like, with the ease of a locker welding helmet. So, there you go. That's what I've been up to. So, we'll take it to the up view and we'll finish it off. So, here we are, welcome back to the up view. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you how this looks, like, you know, and you can see how it works in operation. And this costs £7.62, which we think what it does is quite good. Like that. And you just tighten this up when you want it to be, you know, not to be too loose. Now, when you want. Put the eye loop there, and now, like you know, I mean, I can see like in, I can see the cells, like you know, the cell makeup on my finger. Uh, you know, and you put the light on, just angle it if you want it a bit more down the front. You know, if you, if it's over to the side, you just turn it, turn it, right, you know. I mean, I, I'm getting used to it. I mean, it's resting on my glasses. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's not the comfortablest of things, but you know, it is. You know, I can see quite clearly what everything I need to see. Like, you know, so there you go. What better turn that off and anyway.
So, it was a bit of a catch up, like, you know, let's, uh, I'll tell you something, it is bleeding cold at the moment. All right, you know, let's put me beater on. Comfy. I like Seconda. Right. Um, in other news, this is working beautifully now. Since I've cleaned it and like set it up properly, everything works properly. This is um, Acuris OS60 Myota High Hand Chronograph. So it's, it's it's lovely. I I've got an oyster black uh, two tone silver like you see like this like titanium looking. It's um, an oyster but in titanium looking steel and gold in the same sort of matte gold, which is going to look absolutely like a million pounds of that. I'm not on this stupid NATO strap, mm, you know. Um, got to take the back plate off of that. I've got the stem, I've got, um, excuse me a second, vested in a little packet of, um, as you see, the crap, that's it, it's upside down, is it? It's a crown, um, crown and stem extender set, which has got loads of crowns, loads of like um, various lengths or longer stems for like most popular sizes and shapes, like, you know. Once I've got the, um, the stem release fixed on this, then I can like, you know, then not, I've got the stem, so that's not a problem. And then this will be working and put worked into the fleet. Like, I do like this Pulsar. This is a VD53 Seiko. Very, very good quality chronograph for what it is. Uh, uh, Got a second hand coming for that from Vostok. Looking forward to that. And here's the spares 119 Amphibia. Now you see it's got the paddle hands. Now I've got to reloom those, and what I'm going to do, I'm because this has got the proper. I don't know if you can see the. It's like a slight lensiness to the crystal, whereas a standard Amphibia would have. Have just like a ridged flat glass this one doesn't so i'm gonna transplant the case and crystal together the bezel's good as well so that i'll keep it on that right i'm gonna take the paddle hands off of this the movement works but it's missing a second hand which is why i think it was done up because people don't know what these things are they think it's just an 090 it's not it's a 116 i uh, it's a shame the dial even though the dial looks better than the other one, right? It's actually got cra uh, crazy all over it, and it's beginning to like lift up, like so. The the dial's been contaminated or something, which is a shame. But you know, like if I could find a way to actually save it, I will. Like you know, I don't know, just by using like you know, like an oil based paint to fill in the cracks. So you know, but that is a very rare one one nine. Vostok Amphibia. These are super, super rare export versions. Like you know, I should imagine that these were given to people like you know, like um, people working in Russian embassies abroad and stuff like that, so they didn't attract attention because they said like they said they didn't like made in rather than created in like CCCP sort of thing. So you know, there you go. 119 so that will that will be a job I will probably put on video be the first time I do it probably oh Shana has done very well um, the job that she's doing up in Scotland is uh, she's basically like even though she, she, she's like um, an auxiliary grade sort of thing but slightly higher up and she's actually going to be the auxiliary part of the auxiliary team of the theatre surgery in um, what's it this Glasgow Hospital's eye department and um, she'll be doing like you know half a job would be doing 
um, outpatients and then she'll be following through when people have to go and have eye surgery being like you know there for them as well like you know helping the doctors and the what's it the theater nurses and everything else like you know so you know and I mean it's a very very responsible job and I think she's going to absolutely love it uh, you know, I think she's fallen on her feet. She's loving her new place. Uh, the only thing is downside with the lockdown, and that is people in Glasgow are getting a bit pissed off, and you know, there's an increased police presence and all sorts of like, you know, because like everybody's suspecting the police, and that's why like, steaming, you know, because people are just fed up with it, like, you know, and uh, you know, people are saying, why haven't we got the bloody COVID sorted out, uh, you know? Uh, the Reliant is in uh, Wincanton at the moment at Bennett's Field, like getting its surgery, getting it put apart, put to put, put back to good. Uh, there was quite a lot wrong with it. Like I, I do stand by what I think that it'd been vandalised, because you know, like they'd re they'd rebuilt quite a lot of the electrics lights last year and you know and I said yeah like, and I said I could see it from underneath like I said it looks like there's bits sticking hanging down and everything so you know like that's going to cost me a few quid like you know uh, sorry I've got a bit of a cramp uh, but when I get it back, it'll be all like road legal, and you know, I mean, I'll be able to start going out and about again because I'm sick to death of bloody walking everywhere. Like, right, you know, walking down to Iceland yesterday, oh my god, boy, right, you know. And then when I had something from Iceland, right, like, I don't know what it was, or right, I ate it, and about 10 minutes afterwards, I got all these stomach cramps, and I was like, oh my god, what's going on? And now I'm on the toilet for the next hour, losing about a stone. It's like, uh, and all I had from there was their, um, what's it, their version of the Magnum ice creams, um, a couple of packs of um, like cooked meats for the cats, like, and I tried a bit of the ham, and their southern fried chicken, and I reckon it was the chicken, because I didn't have the bad guts until I'd eaten the chicken. Like, you know, I mean, free quid for a big bag of southern fried chicken is not bad at all, I quite like it, but it, I mean, you know, and I mean, it was like, you know, like I drunk, I drunk mercury or something. Uh, you know, here's a joke for you. Or, you know, what's the favourite footwear of, what's it, um, pedos? White vans. And that's what was told to me by my daughter, like, you know, so, like, you know, my eldest daughter said, you've got a problem with that joke. And we've got to have a chat with her, like, you know. Uh, like, you know, because it's not the sort of joke, I mean, I like really, really disgusting jokes, but like, you know, I, mean, I don't like to joke about that sort of thing, you know? uh, but oh, I'm just relaying it, and I, you know, I mean, I think my first ever joke I ever told was like, what would you call an Arab milkman, and ho, 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 a milkshake, because back in the day, look, like, walls and lions, um, ice cream, she used to get jokes from the lolly sticks, like, you know, what's, what's, you know, what's like yellow and dangerous, like shark infested custard and things like that, you know. So, there you go, like, I've spoken to my GP, um, like, you know, she is of the view is I've just got to hold on, hold on, hold on, because, like, obviously I said about the angina still not being, still not going away and all the rest of it. But, she said, yeah. Oh, excuse me, yeah. Me boring you, Lloyd. Like, I'm sorry, folks, if I'm boring you. It's, it's just that she was saying to me, she said, I'd rather not send you right now to Salisbury Hospital because there's, you know, so much, you know, it's such a high risk of me catching COVID and then dying. So she said, just hold on. It's, you know, wait until the vaccines come in. I mean, everyone's going on about the vaccines, going to save the day. And uh, I don't believe it for a moment. You know, because it's probably only going to save us of that particular strain. But if it morphs into or mutates into another strain, it's going to be totally useless and it's going to be totally virulent. And people will be going, oh yeah, this is all right, you know, hug and everything else, like, you know, and of course they've got the new version of it. You know, and that's nothing compared to what's coming out of South America. Apparently, there's some sort of blood hemorrhaging fever that's been wiping out people in this province, and it's highly contagious. Like, you know, and, and like, it kills you. Like, you literally, like, basically expel blood 
from all your bodily orifices, like, you know, like, it just, like, hemorrhages, like, it's terrible sounding stuff. Mm, you know, so keep an eye out for that, like, you know, watch out for South Americans. Mm-hmm. They start, like, you know, like, instead of having tears in their eyes because you kicked them in the nuts, like, you know, and they've got blood coming out of their eyes, and it's very likely you got it too. Right, with that good news, I think I'll love it and leave it there, and um, say hello to everybody, look after yourselves, hold the line, like, you know, we will be seeing Boris gone in the new year, and that's a good thing. Trouble is, he's going to be replaced by another Tony Blair, which is a bad thing, because uh, Keir Starmer is just is he's such an arsehole, like, you know. And I'm glad I cancelled my Labour membership because I ain't going back all the time. He's in control, or him and, he, him and his nasty, war-starting brood of corrupt people, and that Margaret Hodge, like, you know, uh, the human race will become a sweeter place when she kicks up, kicks off her clogs, right? You know, because I tell you, like, that woman has been nothing but evil since she got involved with politics like you know she caught she allowed lots of lots of bad abuse to go on like you know in her council and everything and she has been nothing but poison to the human race ever since and she hides behind hides her sins behind saying you can't criticize me because i'm a jew well i'm sorry like you know if jewish people do bad things they should be criticized if a muslim person does a bad thing they should be criticized if an english person does anything they should be criticized because that's what it's all about you can't turn around and turn off punishments and you know stuff like that just because of your religion like, you know but that's what she expects and the whole labor thing has been about is because corbyn like ed Miliband refused to bow to the Labour Friends of Israel and that's what it's all about so they've had their knives out for him like they've had them out for Ed Miliband ever since as well like you know I mean they made so much of a fuss about Ed Miliband eating a, a bacon sarni and what an affront it was he was getting death threats of that like you know from like Jewish people like, well I'm sick to death like you know Labour the very smallest minority of Labour membership are Jewish people, right? Why are we all having to fall over again, right? Just because these spiteful people say, well, you got to do it my way because I'm Jewish or else I'm going to shout anti Semite. And that's what they've done to Jeremy Corbyn, you know? And we all saw it was going to happen. And I mean, the biggest person behind this is Rupert Murdoch because he is a dual citizen, dual Australian dual Israeli, like, you know, but he's not Jewish, he's a Zionist, in, in other words, he's a pretend Jew, but he, he's, he's the one that, like, you know, does it all for, like, you know, for Israel, like, you know, so, like, when he dies, they'll probably make him a Jew posthumously or something, you know, I mean, I don't care about religion, I don't care about Muslims, I don't care about Jews, I don't care about Christians, Catholic, I do not care. You know, that's something what other people do. I don't condemn them for doing it. I don't hate them for doing it. I don't even feel sorry for them for doing it. It's their choice. But when their choices start to affect me and mine, then I do care because as far as I'm concerned, like, they can go and do one. And on that, on that note, I will let it go there. See you in the next one. That's if I get a next one, if I don't get blown up or killed or something. See ya.